The average person is said to spend 15 minutes in the bathroom. Why not take advantage of that time and learn something new? Presenting the 15-minute podcast on weird facts, crazy details, and funny particulars that you'll be able to enjoy while you're taking a sh... Well, on your free time. Welcome to The Shit with Sam Butler. Welcome to another episode of The Shit Podcast. Hi, I'm your host, Sam Butler. Thank you for joining us today. I have a very special guest, my friend, Gabe Ruiz. Hello. Hello. Thank you for being back on, on, on the, the shit. We, I'm talk- <laughs> <laughs> Thanks back for being on that back. shit, man. I'm back on it. <laughs> You're back on that shit. <laughs> you know, but no. no, but thanks for being here. Uh, we have a special episode for you guys today. This episode is about a historical figure, someone that I was intrigued about. And I thought, you know, I saw a thing about her. It's a girl. You know? So I saw a thing about Ashley her. Olsen. Ashley Olsen. <laughs> yeah, are they still even alive? <laughs> I don't even know. Probably, yes. Probably. <laughs> Last photos I saw, I was like, wow, they're they're um, getting up there, you know. <laughs> they're looking like J.D. Rockefeller and stuff, you know. <laughs> like they need better to eat hair, some food. though. <laughs> they need to eat some food, you know. But uh, no, thanks for coming on this episode. We're actually going to talk about uh, someone that's a historical figure in the United States, uh, if you guys don't know who this is, we're talking about Amelia Earhart. Oh, that was my second guess. That was your second guess, yeah. Ami- Amelia, Amelia, it's A-M-E-L-I-A. Amelia. I always thought it was Amelia with an E, like like Emily A, like Amelia. But apparently it's Amelia. Huh. Am- Amelia. Uh-huh. In Spanish would be Amelia. Amelia. So it's Amelia. Oreja Corazón. Yeah, and her last name is <laughs> <laughs> her last name is Earhart. Booya. Oreja Corazón. Amelia Earhart. But it's pronounced Earhart. Earhart. All right. The, uh, right. So her first name is pronounced Emilia with an E, but it's spelled with an A, and her last name is Earhart, pronounced with an A. I'm sure that was the start of all her problems. So that was like where all, it all went wrong. Nowhere to go but <laughs> yeah, down. <it> went, <laughs> yeah. So everybody knows a lot about Amelia Earhart. Um, a lot of things you guys didn't know about Amelia Earhart. The first time she saw an airplane, didn't really do it for her. I could see that. You know? Like. Um, in the last a collection of the diary entries published after her death, Earhart said that she felt unmoved, a thing of rusty wire and wood, at the Iowa State Fair in 1908. She actually discovered her love for aviation when she worked as a nurse's aide in Toronto. At well, that time, she and her friends hung out with the hangars and flying fields mostly to meet pilots. Ah, got it. So, <laughs> she, her love of flying came from meeting pilots, you know. It was a good job. <laughs> yeah. So, she learned how to fly from another woman. That's another thing. Oh, I yeah. did not. Yep. Yeah. Nita Snook made history as the first woman to run her own aviation business and commercial airfield. She gave Earhart flying lessons in Long Beach, California in 1921. 21? Yep. I thought the, it was much later. Cool. Yeah. No, she, she and we're going to get into it, but she started to fly in 1921. Okay. Yeah. They charged her a dollar in Liberty Bonds for every minute that they spent in the air together. That's a lot. That's super expensive for 1921. Right. Yeah, a dollar a minute. So today, um, Earhart holds more fame than her teacher. But Snook deserves accolades in her own right. And I guess we can discover who, what's up with Snooks in another episode. But um, flying across the ocean was not Earhart's only record. She became the first to do a lot of things. She was the first in many domains. Um, the aviator eventually became the first woman to fly across the Atlantic as a passenger in 1928. She also became the first to fly solo in 1932, then nonstop from one American coast to another in 1932. Uh, she also set records among both genders when she became the first to fly solo from Honolulu to Oakland, Los Angeles to Mexico City, and Mexico City to Newark. Okay, that's... She did a, all that in 1935. A minute, that must have... Well, no, this was it. after she had... She, she got her own plane. Uh, this okay. was a, this was after she got out of school. That makes more sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was but, really worried about her finances for a second. I'm like, <laughs> <yeah>. shit, Amelia. <laughs> well, she did that in 1935. Uh, she started in 1928 uh, doing the fo- the solo flights. 1932 was when she flew across the Atlantic solo. Okay. 
That was a big deal because Charles Lindbergh had flown across the Atlantic solo in 1927. So mm -hmm. Charles Lindbergh became a hero, a national hero. It was in, a big deal. A big deal in 1927. He was the first guy to fly across the Atlantic. Were there more people between him and when she eventually did it? Yes, but solo, no. Okay, so it was him, yeah, and then like three then years later, uh, Amelia it was, was like five was years like later with a uterus on board. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was the one that was like, "I'm a girl, I can do it too," you know, kind of cool. thing. But it, it only took her five years, which is remarkable. Yeah, you know, P other people were flying across the Atlantic, but they were not flying solo. Yeah, and uh, even even Charles, because I, I looked up Charles Lindbergh while I was reading into this, Charles Lindbergh. Um, wasn't the first to cross the Atlantic. Um, they they had done that eight years prior. Okay. To him actually doing it, but but he was the guy that did it by himself. Okay. And that's that what made sense. him a superstar. In the spirit of St. Louis, I got to see that plane. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, she also got recognized um, uh, with the Distinguished Flying Cross, which is a a big recognition. Uh, John Glenn, one of the astronauts, has it. George Herbert Walker Bush, which is George Bush Sr. Oh, yeah. Herbert. That's probably <laughs> H.W. George H. H. Yeah. So she volunteered as a nurse's aide. She worked as a telephone operator, a tutor. She served as a social worker. She received an invitation. And that's when she when she was working as a social and after worker. after all that, she said, fuck this. I'm out, you guys. I'm flying, <laughs> I'm guys. You I'm people flying. make me sick. Peace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she got out of there quick. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's the, the lesson here. Like, don't flirt with pilots. Become a pilot. Yeah. Boom. So her mom helped her buy her first plane. Her first plane was like $4,000. That's still a lot in 1930s money, right? Yeah. Like right after the yeah, recession? Right, no, um, depression. During. During. That yeah. was 29, right? Yeah. Damn, During I'm rusty. The, so her, apparently her mom was very supportive. And her mom was like, I'm going to give you a bunch a of plane. money <laughs> uh, for my inheritance. She had an inheritance. So obviously they weren't poor people. Of course. But the mom helped her buy her, her first plane. Some of the articles that I read said she had spent like $4,000 on this plane. And she was able to. You can just buy a plane. That blows my mind. And she bought an old plane. It was a biplane. This is a biplane. Okay. Um, the planes were more modern than that in the 30s. These are like 1910s, 1950s. She got a fixer-upper. She got a fixer-upper, and her instructor was like, you shouldn't fly that plane. It's not... You don't know me. You don't know my life, bitch. And she punched him. <laughs> I'm now picturing her as a belligerent drunk, and you will not Well, she was a mind. tough woman, though. She stood out in a man's world. She yeah. was she was she was part of a woman's the the woman's rights movement. She, she also had a lot to do with... She had a club called the 99ers. And this was a club that still exists today. And this club was designed for women that wanted to become pilots. Cool. Right? So the, the way, and I was reading into the 99ers, the reason the 99ers are called the 99ers was because there was 117 women at that time with licenses to fly. And they were all invited to attend this meeting to talk about setting up a women's club for flying. And only 99 of them showed up. Okay. So they became the 99ers, which was Pretty cool because it could have been the 69ers and that would have been really weird. Super awkward <laughs> to be taken been... seriously. Like, no, you <laughs> guys, stop it. You know, there the 90, <laughs> good thing 99 people showed up and not 69 yeah. people. The, the 420s, like, the no. Four, the 420s, yeah. <laughs> Those are the two, <laughs> the two funny groups. numbers. Yeah, yeah. but uh, so they, and she did a lot to promote flying. Now, um, some of the things, I mean, a lot of people know this stuff and And we're just kind of going over it. But where it gets really interesting is when she decides to fly around the world. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, let me find some of the details here. I had her co-pilot's name in my head. And it just, oh, yeah, Fred Noonan. I found him. Fred Noonan. Fred, Fred Noonan. So they decide to fly around the world. Were they an item? Uh, I don't think so. I don't want to speculate. But speculate away, Sam. No, I don't know. I You're don't know. a white man with a podcast. The world is yours. <laughs> I, don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, she, you look at some, she had her own clothing line. That uh -huh. was cool. 1920, she designed her own clothing. She learned how to sew when she was younger. A lot of the way, she wanted to make it very affordable. So they had a lot of like aeronautical themes. 
like yeah. propeller but I've seen like, like the, the the image that comes to mind is her with like the the big glasses and the hat uh-huh. and the like the aviator jacket and like yeah, yeah it's pretty bad and there's a, I saw some pictures where she's wearing like the dress she's like a kind of kind of like the you know how flat chested was in the in style back yeah. in the 20s and 30s so <laughs> you see a lot of that kind of stuff so getting back to the topic they get lost Ta-da. And um, the episode we just did in Stacagada was about the Bermuda Triangle. <gasps> did they get lost in the Bermuda Triangle? They did Triangle? not. I was going to ask, where I, did they get lost? I know, but, I, but everybody thinks they did. Okay, so it's like, one of those things. Yeah, that it's one of those things that, because even, it even came up as a related. It's weird because I decided to do this, these two deals separately, just this random separate thing. And as I'm researching, it says other uh, related themes, uh, Amelia Earhart. And I was like, what, oh. what does that have to do with anything if she didn't disappear in the Bermuda Triangle? Well... I guess it has to do with disappearing and, and being an aviator and so on and so forth. But they ventured to travel around the world. Um, and then they got lost. And then um, there's several theories of what happened to them when they got lost. Um, first of all, when they got lost, uh, they spent $4 million trying to find them. Okay. Which was a lot of money for the 30s. The government was like, this is a national hero. We've got to find her. Oh, she was already like in the public eye. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, because okay. she had flown from, could you imagine? Like, I've, I've flown from here to Mexico City. It's a two-hour flight. But from here to New York City is a three-hour flight mm-hmm. going 750 miles an hour on a jet plane. Yeah. Or 500 to, you know, I think I think the average commercial airliner flies like 500 to 700 miles. So... One of these. <laughs> one, yeah, one of these planes. I mean, it was a, they were more advanced than this uh, because by now she had a lot of funding and attention and so on and so forth. But um, did they have any any idea, like in general, where she where they were last seen, or were they just like I don't, I don't know? Yes, um, they were flying in the Pacific Ocean, hmm? right? Right along um, the Phoenix Islands, the Marshall Islands. Okay. The Marshall Islands were controlled by Japan. Uh-huh. Right. And um, let me see if I can, because I'm the Marshall. Uh, let me see. One of the theories. Okay. One of the theories is that they landed in the Marshall Islands and were captured by the Japanese. I. Okay. But yep. like they would know immediately. Like we have your American heroes. They thought they were, money yeah. They thought they were spies, we and, you know. And one researcher thinks they were tortured and died in custody. While some clues did make it plausible, no conclusive evidence ever emerged. Okay. Right now, this is where things got interesting. Um, they found some bones. Oh, recently. Recently. Yes, I remember. Yeah. The half reading a Reddit headline and saying, oh, cool, and then moving on with my life. Yeah. Now, um, I should have written it down. Nika Maroro Island, uh-huh. which is like Gardner Island. It's part of that Phoenix Island chain. Okay. Is where they found these bones. And at first they said it couldn't be her because they were the bones of a European man. Mm-hmm. And then the bones, the bones were found in 1940. So, so it must have been so through time, some shit. <laughs> time had, yeah, time had passed, and the bones looked washed, and and um, um, there's something called a sex, a sex, <laughs> with sexed box. Sexed box. Yeah, a sex box. It's not what you're thinking, <laughs> 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 but a sexed box. I don't know why they call it that. But a sex box was an instrument that came in a box that they would use to measure distances in the air, and they found a sex box. I know that sounds weird, right? It's like a, the predecessor because, to the modern day black yeah, cause, box. Yeah, because yeah, well, no, this was an instrument for measuring, like oh, a, okay, like a surveyor's tool. Okay. So if you were on a plane and you're looking out and you're going like, how far is that point of land that I'm looking at there, and how you do I? Your trusty old sex and well, sex, then sex, because it, it's spelled like sect, like okay. sext. Like you're sexting there, someone, uh-huh. but then box. Okay. So you look at that and you go, uh, that, sound, that, sounds, that sounds dirtier than it really is. But No wonder they got lost doing that shit <laughs> while they were <laughs> they got driving. Lost like, pay attention to the sexting road, Sexting each people. other. But um, they found the sex box. They found the bones. 
and and then later on they they you know this this was discarded um, as impossible improbable another set of scientists came on board and they said possibly because of the dimensions um, she was like five foot five uh, or five foot eight and then this these bones couldn't they have been the co-pilots um, they were thinking these these were hers um, they kept trying to prove that theory okay but uh, when you start reading uh, how how they how they really tried to find her um, she kept sending radio signals out mm -hmm. and re and there's a, a, a US ship station there that's supposed to be sending signals back but they were receiving signals but they believed that the plane wasn't receiving signals okay so they, they thought were, they were just sending them out they were sending them out and also gardner island was supposed to, uh, one of the island was supposed to land on was supposed to be sending them signals too and that's how they could triangulate their position okay so they were able to like narrow it down to a narrow certain down. area they weren't like in the middle of the ocean yeah. like well shit around here somewhere <laughs> yeah so one of her last communications was that she was flying at 157 degrees 0.15 whatever in this straight line mm -hmm. find us okay right they believe that she ran out of gas and crashed into the ocean mm -hmm. but these bones started creating this speculation and they started trying to They started to look at old photographs and they started to see that there was um, landing gear kind of sticking out of the water and some photographs Ooh. that looked similar to the ones of the plane. They also found tools that were improvised, like a sheet of aluminum that they were using to dig with. And this aluminum had a certain shape and size rivets. And they said, well, that, that was something like that was on the plane, so it was probably from that. So all the speculation is going down. Her family is getting involved. Her, she's got like a grandson that, that's very interested in finding out 80-something years later, mm -hmm. which now I think we'd be 90 years. Yeah. This has been 90 years. But I didn't know she had a family, so that's Yeah, cool. so she had like a great-grandson or something. So they're trying, to, they're trying to discover this, and it finally came down that the sex, the sex box actually serial number was most likely from from a different year and a different plane crash. Okay, so some other so, plane, somebody so, else yes. managed to and, get to land. And, and and so they're going, oh, that's improbable. And then they, they also know that there was a plane crash in a neighboring island, and they identified that flight, mm -hmm. and that panel came from that flight, and some of the villagers actually said, Yeah, we took some of the stuff from... We helped ourselves to some of the scraps. We helped ourselves to some of the stuff and brought it over here. Okay. And so the improvised panel was now... Um, no longer evidence. No longer evidence. But there's been companies that have had sonar. They spent millions of dollars looking for her, and they have not found her. So till now, the theory is that she ran out of... And there's people that are arguing... It's impossible. She was an experienced uh, yeah, pilot, and, and, and she wouldn't have. And one of the theories yeah, is that, that had she flown on that line that she said she was flying, she would have maybe missed where she was supposed to land, but would have landed um, in Close another enough. island. Yeah, down that same line. So all these different theories are there, but the best, you know, the I guess the 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 shit about this is that she was a pioneer. She she. Prove that women could do the same thing that men could do. Yeah. And uh, she she put the U.S. on the map when it came to aviation. So that's this episode of The Shit. I mean, cool. Earhart. And thank you for joining me. I thank mean, you for um, having me. I'm glad that uh, we were able to do this. Uh, if people want to find you, where can they find you? Uh, I'm online, mostly. <laughs> uh, soy Gabe. Like if you were writing to a vegetarian guy named Gabe. That's how you spell it. Soy Gabe. Yeah, Gabe. Soy Gabe. Um, it's funny because uh, have you seen that where they go soy milk? And what yeah. if what <laughs> if milk's just introducing itself in Spanish? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, soy Gabe. Hi, milk. <laughs> Hi, milk. And uh, I'm tu amigo Sam. You can find me as tu amigo Sam on social media. You can also find me on YouTube as tu amigo Sam. Please like and subscribe to our videos. And you can also find us on. Um, 
Spotify and other platforms as Está Cagado Podcast. That's it for this episode of The Shit Podcast. Thank you all for joining us. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Bye.